Thank you for all your work. I was really, I was touched by the people that aren't there now when I, when I, look, at, when I look at it. And uh, it's such a bittersweet quality to look at it, but also it seems embodied. I mean, you're being dragged down the street. I mean, there's, but there's a very a physical quality that I love, but I'm actually, really, it's worth asking when you think about AIDS and politics and what influenced the representation of your work, where does it, you know, what were your influences or who do you think about? What friends, what comrades, I mean, and also where do you fit within, if you think about this tradition of queer political performance, which is so, I mean, I think of Jose Saria warning people with his arias and the black cat, there's a cop coming in the room, he's wearing this, this, and this, or the, we are the Stonewall Girls kick line to theater of the ridiculous to, um, gay shame, street parties. I mean, there's so many gestures of direct action and performance that this is all part of. So just what, what do you think about when you're going through pulling this material together? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, one of the things that, that I really consciously thought about as a direct experience in, in thinking of demonstrations as theater, mm -hmm. as... One of the influences of being part of active demonstrations, being part of the visuals, being part of the agitprop and the theater of it, kind of really affected how I thought about performance art for my own work. And then also coming out of the East Village, the club scene, the Pyramid Club, the Limbo Lounge, John Kelly, I mean everyone, these people were incredible influences for me as a performance artist, but I also saw myself as different, so when I started the drag pose series, I could never be be on stage. I could never be taboo or the, the people that really were geniuses in my eyes and the experiences at the clubs. But I wanted to address um, not only my own internal homophobia about gender, but kind of deal with the issue of just removing my maleness in a series of photographs taken by Michael Wakefield, who's here. And so Patina Dupre's project was born that, in that gesture, and, and what occurred to me was when I went out and drive on the streets with no connection to the art world, no connection to a context of why I should be in drag, the experience that I encountered on the street was enough to keep me interested in doing it as a thing out of context. When I, when I was at the kitchen and got pushed away from someone, like I went up, my friends were all there, they didn't know it was me, and I was physically pushed away by a friend of mine looking at him, saying, why, why are you talking to me? And I thought, this is 1989. New York City, what the hell is wrong with this picture? Why? You can laugh, you can make a joke, you know, whatever. So it was about the internal homophobia that not only I experienced, but kind of the, taking the gender codes out of context and pushing those limits. Uh, it's interesting, um, the samples that you gave, because I think maybe one thing that um, I feel really uh, connected to about all of us is um, is actually a different kind of embodiment, of, mm -hmm. uh, like a physical embodiment right. of of um, ideas, more like a sort of a body as a site of intervention. Mm -hmm. And I also um, would say that I don't think that um, we are separate from our our loved ones who we've lost, um, or our friends who are daily dealing with HIV in mm -hmm. all the ways that we are. But um, you know, this is something that I think I see in my work that is constantly trying to um, address resisting and also trying to figure out the, like, resisting them. Like, they're always trying to speak through me, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it half of the time. Um, but also, maybe a possibility of, like, accepting that I'm there, like, there's this nesting that is constantly going on. <coughs> Um, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs>